Hey guys, I'm with the Quips and Door. Well, today we're going to be doing an interesting video on how to clean and take care of your knife, especially stacked leather knife with leather sheaths. And I got with me right here a pretty interesting piece. This is a classic trail guide from actually Classic Blades, the company that became what is known as Blackjack. So this knife has actually been in a friend of mine's family for years. It's with his dad's knife. My friend Sean Riva, he's a professional photographer, goes all over the world and he's taking this out into the bush in Africa and whatnot and relied on this knife and did a lot of stuff. And he wanted to share it with me. It's made of an A2 tool steel. I'll give you guys some closer shots here. And uh, I've already did a little bit of work on the leather, the stack leather handle. When I got it, it wasn't as, as glossy as it is now. But today we're going to try to clean up the blade a little bit, oil it, maybe polish up the brass a wee bit. But for the age of this knife, it's actually in excellent condition. Let me show you the sheath real quick. Now here's the sheath, very simple, belt loop sheath. We're going to show you guys some quick tips right here. With all great tools, we got to take care of them. You guys have spent a lot of money on your equipment, so we want to make sure it lasts a lifetime. i got a couple items here I'm going to share with you. Make sure you have a roll of paper towels handy, just in case you spill something or need to sop some extra oil up. I brought down my uh, little vat of boiled linseed. This will be more for wooden handles or wooden scales and knives, uh, but linseed oil is great also on the handles of axes. We don't want to use that. It's a little too gummy to use what we're doing today. I got some simple gun clean patches. You guys, if you have any other cloth, you can use that. I've got a torn up piece of cotton t-shirt. Baby burp rags or, or cloth diapers, I actually think work the best when you're trying to polish something up. A little bit of classic hops, number nine, lubricating oil in, a, in an aerosol can. We also, ha also have this old fashioned oil as well. We'll talk a little bit more about oil here in a second. Also got some tri lube, now this is more for guns. This is some otter stuff, lubricates, cleans, and it's a rust inhibitors for all firearms and metal objects. And then I did bring a little bit of board cleaner out because I, you might not want to use this. Remember, if you're going to be using your knives to cut food with, you want to make sure what you're using is going to be food safe. So stay away from the board cleaner. Just wanted to remind you guys of that. We'll talk about some op options of putting in things on your blade if you're going to be using it to cut your food. We got a little bit of masking tape that's going to go a long way with protecting ourselves and protecting different surfaces from different cleaners. Some cotton swabs, a nylon brush, scrub brush, an old toothbrush, some toothpaste, and make sure it's the gritty white paste, not the tooth gel. We'll get into that. This is a poor man's brass cleaner right here. I brought a, a brush for, uh, for shining your boots, but before you go in there and raid your dad's closet, make sure he's not using the brush to apply black polish, because when you start going over your brown material and it's got black polish in there, you might get a result that you're not looking for. And then one product I want to kind of focus on is actually from my good friend Paul Scheider at Hedgehog Leatherworks. He's starting to sell this Hedgehog proprietary formula leather conditioner. He sells this on his website for $9. And I got to tell you, you get a good amount for $9. And you guys, I can see I've used a little bit already. And that is actually will last you a good long while putting nice generous coats on your material. We're going to use this for the stacked leather handle and for the leather sheath. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to protect ourselves. That's what the masking tape is going to do for. We're going to cover up that edge a little bit so when we're handling this knife, we're not going to slip and cut ourselves. So basically, we just want to put the, uh, the tape down over the edge. So there's still a good amount right there. And then we're just going to fold it over. But the key is that we want a little bit of tape past the blade. We don't want the edge to be working. Then we'll fold that over the point as well. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually tape off where the stack leather is uh, away from the brass because we don't want it we don't want the the toothpaste which we're going to use to clean the brass to actually get in the leather it can gum it up a little bit now before we go any further remember guys not all oils are made equal before you run to your kitchen and grab some uh, olive oil out of there and use that olive oil has it has a tendency to get kind of gunky and beat up and also it's going to go rancid it's going to go bad so you don't want that when you're cleaning your when you're cleaning your knives even though it's food safe you don't want to leave that on your edge you want something nice and thin either mineral oil or you can even use wax if you guys are chapstick fans or burnt beeswax fans the stick of burnt beeswax works wonderful to apply to the edge of your edge of your blade especially if you already have some other coating you don't have to use that much all right so I'll give you guys a look see real quick of our our knife that we made safe we got the tape around the edge so there's no cutting area that we got to worry about the point is also covered up and then we have tape protecting our leather when we start cleaning the blade. Now one thing you're going to watch out for, I would not go ahead and treat the leather and then put the tape on. The glue and the tape, the adhesive could pull some of the conditioner away from the leather and we don't want to leave this tape on there very long. We're going to get the job done and we want to take it off. Now if you guys want to get really high speed low drag, you can get some nice heavy duty brass cleaner. 
But for today, we're just going to do a little bit of toothpaste. It's a poor man's brass cleaner. We don't need it to be that shoddy. We're just going to go up there and clean it up a little bit, get rid of some of the gunk and everything. So we're going to go in there, just nice little small circles. And you know, worst case scenario, if the if the toothpaste isn't coarse enough to scrub the brass, the worst case scenario is you have a minty fresh knife. So get in there, and I can already see it shining up a little bit. Now remember, when you guys are using these solvents or chemicals, make sure you're in a proper area that's ventilated depending on the needs of that material. I like to use more natural materials like this so I can do it in the basement, not to worry about anything spilling and the kids messing with it or the dogs getting into it and causing harm to them. So I put a little bit more toothpaste on here. And make sure you don't make sure you don't use this toothbrush after what this is an old toothbrush, like I said before. If you want to go buy an El Cheapo toothbrush at the dollar store or whatever, you know, mark that when you're cleaning brush so that way. You know, uh, your cousins are, you know, distant family when they come to visit and won't, won't be using that extra toothbrush. Might taste a little brassy. Now, maintenance of your gear is so important. You know, my grandfather said, you know, told me when I was, when I was young, and I've never forgot, he said, if you buy quality stuff and you take care of it, it'll last you your whole life. And that's really important to me. You know, one thing I think we can all agree on, we've kind of, Especially my generation has been raised in this disposable society. Everything you get, you replace, you know, a year later. You get a, you get a TV, and a year later, a new model comes out. You get rid of that TV, buy a new TV. Especially with things like computers or cell phones. Everybody's got to have the newest and best cell phone. Nobody, uh, nobody keeps a cell phone any, anymore for over a year. Which, if you think about it, it's a lot of money and time that we're investing in these items that we just throw away. So stuff like your knives, especially things like this. I mean, this knife has been passed down from father to son. And I really want to thank Sean for giving me the opportunity to do this video on here. And hopefully I'll shine this up for him. Alright. So that looks pretty good. I can see that we've gotten some gunk off of there from the, the way the toothbrush looks. So now we're going to come over here and we're going to get a majority of this stuff off of here with a paper towel. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. Now I'm not telling you that this brass is going to pass, up, is going to pass line inspection. It's just a way to touch it up to make it look a lot better than it did. And I can tell you already, it looks a lot better. And you guys can tell just now how much shinier that brass is. Gotta take this tape off nice and slowly. Make sure we don't pull anything away from the leather. All right. Oh yeah, that is a handsome piece right there. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and work on the, the leather. Give you guys a close look at the leather here real quick. So it's got a nice good sheen to it already. There's still a little bit of fissures and cracks in there, but you know we're not going to be able to really do that much. It takes you know the leather can soak up a lot. We won't, we don't want it to soak up too much on here, but we don't want the handle to be greasy or slip out of our hands. That's where the wax comes in really well. So I'm going to come in here, my cloth. And unfortunately, shining boots and shining things have become a lost art. Just like that. Or something like this. Make sure we still have our tape on here because we're holding this edge. And we just want to come in here and very lightly just work that polish into the handle. Or that conditioner, I should say, into the handle. And you'd be a surprise at how fast the leather starts soaking it up, especially if it's desperate for it. Like I said before, when I got this knife, the leather hadn't seen anything for a while, or if it did, it been it's had quite a uh, experienced life and need a little bit extra love. But so far, it's looking pretty well. Now, at this point, don't worry about the wax hitting the brass or anything like that. You can go and buff that off. And, te and technically, the wax is not going to do anything bad. It's not going to go rancid. It's just going to be an extra protectant. It might cut the sheen of the metal off a little bit. But remember, here at Equipped Indoor, we're all about using our equipment. doesn't mean it can't be pretty and used. Now, one important step that I didn't do on this handle that we're going to do on the, on the sheath itself is clean it beforehand. Because, like I said before, I've already cleaned it and I've already put one coat on there. So we don't need to clean it right now, but we'll, we'll show you that when we get to the sheath. So we got one good coat on there. We're going to let this dry a little bit and then we'll be right back. Alright guys, let me give you guys a look, see how we're looking right now. Nice and shiny. I'm going to put one more little coat on here. 
and then we're going to move on to the sheath. Let's get over here to our sheath. Now one thing I said before, before you go digging in your dad's uh, shine box, go get your shine box. Make sure that some people I've seen, they use their brush to apply the, uh, the polish. Watch out. Also, if you do a lot of polishing, there can be a lot of extra polish on the, on the thing. So take it across your hand or take it across a paper towel. Make sure you're not getting any transfer. If you're getting a lot of, a lot of transfer, you might want to get a, new, a different brush or clean it a different way. Don't worry about that with this. We're just going to go over it real light and just kind of get all the, the dirt and stuff off of here. So one thing we're going to need the Q-tips around here is because when we get the uh, wax on there, on all these nooks and crannies, we want to make sure that there's not wax gunking up right there because we don't want it to collect dirt and make it wear faster. We want a nice clean coat that soaks into the leather. So we're going to do the same thing. Come in here and just work this in here. And it's so amazing to watch the leather come back to life. This is going to help the uh, stitching last longer, keep the le leather flexible, it's not going to rot out. It's going to add a waterproof quality too as well. Make sure you get inside the belt loop as well because that's the actually the piece of the leather that probably gets the most wear is being it's up against your belt. Make sure you protect that area as well. And you want to get the billet. That piece right along there that helps the uh, knife from not cutting through the leather. Dry our at side of this and just get any extra stuff that we haven't got. And we're going to let that dry. Alright guys, so I'm going to come in here now and make sure we don't have any gunk or nasty stuff in the little corners and edges. Clean it out pretty well with a couple Q-tips. Alright. Take a little bit of wax the Q-tip, not much, and we're going to just work those corners. Remember, we don't want globs. Once you've worked it in, take the other side and just get any excess. Alright guys, so the last part we're going to do is put a little oil on the blade. Like I said before, choose what kind of oil you're going to use depending on how you're going to use your knife. If you're going to use your knife to eat with, you want something that's going to be non-toxic of course. Very thin mineral oil will do it. Like I said before, certain things like beeswax. For this we're just going to use a little bit of hops number nine, some gun oil or gun lubricant will work as well, anything that's designed for metal. We're going to take our tape off very carefully. First thing I'm going to do is I want to get away all that residue, any of that toothpaste that was on there. Still very sharp. Might have to might have to touch that up a little bit. This blade is convex. Very nice A, A2 tool steel, like I said before. A classic. You know, I don't even want to guess how much this knife is worth. Probably around 300 bucks. And Sean just mailed it to me. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take some of our patches right here. You really want a nice thin layer. You don't want it to gunk up. You don't want it to beat up. You know, the, the, the thicker the layer of oil or anything like that, the more likely you're going to get dirt and everything else to stick on it. So we just want a nice oil blade. You oil your blade a lot. The oil soaks into the leather. If you have a nice protected le leather, that water's not going to get in there. It'll, it'll make the blade last forever. Like I said before, this blade has been all over the world. Whenever you touch a blade, the oils in your hands can actually be counterproductive. So, just go on what your eye can see. Make sure you get that edge as well. Alright guys, we'll just make sure you look at the blade, make sure we can't see any extra oil puddling up. Get some of these ed edges. And there we have it. Nice and clean, the brass is looking a lot better. Got rid of a little bit of that green. It's not 100%, there's still some uh, Still could use a little care right there where the blade is seated into the handle. But it looks a lot better. There you guys go. So you put this bad boy away and use it another day. I'd like to thank our E2E member Sean Riva. 
Sean, thanks. I'll be sending this back your way. A says hi as well. Well, hey guys, Adam from Clifton Door. I hope that how to take care of your knife video helped out a lot. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. If you have any other tips or tricks for people, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have any questions for me, you can send them to adam at equippedandor.com. Make sure to check out our Facebook and Twitter feeds, facebook.com slash equippedandor, and like us. And then, of course, you can go to the website at www.equippedandor.com. All right, guys. You guys take care. Be safe out there. And remember, if you're not always prepared, you're never prepared. Thanks.